the Dallas International Film Festival this year takes place April 3rd through the 13th. Uh, we're going to be primarily stationed here at the Mockingbird Station. Uh, will be the main theater we'll be using is the Angelica Theater in Dallas, right here in Mockingbird Station. Uh, we'll also be throughout the city at the Clyde Warren Park, the Perot Museum of uh, Nature and Science, uh, Crow Collection of Asian Art, uh, Cinemark, West Plano as well. The Texas Theater in Oak Cliff is a great old classic movie theater house. We'll be there. Uh, and then and, and if you're interested in learning more and cover all the details of the festival, be sure to visit our website at dallasfilm.org and just click on the button that says Dallas International Film Festival and, and everything you could possibly want is right there. Okay, uh, so if you could just tell me a little bit about yourself and your title. Yeah, Jackson, I'm the, my name is Lee Pappert. I am the President and CEO of the Dallas Film Society and the Executive Director of the Dallas International Film Festival. So you can say I have the distinction of running this group. So. Okay. And how did the Dallas International Film Festival all get started and how did you become a part of it? Well, I came in about two and a half years ago. Uh, their board of directors was looking for a new uh, president CEO and uh, I knew a couple of folks and they sought me out and asked me if I would interview and I was very interested and, and loved the opportunity and, and they were kind enough to, to give me this honor and it is an honor to run the group. The group actually is eight years old. Uh, it was formed back in 2006 uh, through the uh, passion and creativity of two gentlemen by the name of Michael Kane and Lanier Timmerlin were the two people that founded this originally way back when. Their desire was to create the, the largest regional film festival in the Southwest and we are continuing to strive to do that. All right, so I'm just going to have you start off by saying, you know, your names, um, your title, and, you know, a little bit about the film. So. Okay. Um, my name is Daniel Lobbs and I'm the writer-director of Easy. And my name is Brennan Bliss and I play Jeffrey in the film Easy. Okay. And can you give me like a little short uh, synopsis of the film and what it's, what it's about? Um, Easy is about uh, kind of a day in the life of two brothers and throughout the day little interactions that aren't, um, little interactions become bigger issues. So like little mis misdirected communications become bigger and bigger and bigger issues until the film just ends before <laughs> any kind of real resolution can occur. Which I think is awesome because it leaves you wondering, which is great because you just get to decide how it ends by yourself. Yeah, I think, you know, it's like it's a family drama, so, and with family dramas, I feel like for the most part, especially, you know, when you think about the types of things that the film deals with, uh, you know, it's 2014, you know, these situations can be resolved at some point. My name is Ben Bhatti. I am the producer of Education. Um, it's a short 20-minute documentary on the continuing rising cost of higher education and the diminishing returns in the marketplace. So it sort of looks at different perspectives of Americans, politicians, um, taxpayers, parents, and it sort of looks at how they, what they feel about the current uh, rising costs of higher education and the stark numbers of un high unemployment for students that are getting a, a higher education and are saddled with debt. So it really covers student debt and a whole bunch of sub-issues of unemployment, um, is my education rigorous enough to get me a good job, is it providing me the skills I need to go out there and, and succeed in the workforce. So it's really looking at that from, from a lot of different perspectives. My name is McKaylee Miller and I play Katie Campbell. Working on the film was incredible. The film, um, in the film we have, you heard the whole synopsis, but there's a Down Syndrome kid in the film, his name's David, and working with him was absolutely incredible. The film kind of revolves around him and David had never taken an acting class in his life, so we were all kind of a little bit nervous, like is he going to understand like what marks are, like to hit the mark, and is he going to understand you can't look at the camera, and so he absolutely killed it, knocked it out of the park, he was so good. Um, so just getting to work with him and getting to work with this entire cast and crew was just amazing. Where do you see the Dallas International Film going from where you've actually seen it go since you got here and maybe let's say the next five to ten years? What's happening I think I'm most excited about right now is the fact that the, the general public, the general citizens of Dallas and the city council members and everyone, they're really starting to understand what a film festival can be uh, and truly recognizing that it's we bring a, a traveling artistic exhibit to Dallas for 11 days. 
uh, the likes of which they're not, most folks are never going to get a chance to see. So most of these movies won't necessarily make it into a theater. So we bring this in, uh, to Dallas, and what's happening is people are understanding now that that it is a truly unique opportunity to see some great artwork. Uh, and they're taking advantage of it, and they're talking about it, and they're telling their friends. And so what we we seem to see more so now than in the last first couple of years is a lot more people really are getting what a film festival can be. And what we want to do is to continue to build upon that, uh, to get to where every year, every springtime, early March, people start saying, when does the film festival start? When does the film festival start? And it becomes a truly signature event for the city of Dallas, not just for the local population, but become a true tourist destination as well. So we're excited about making that happen. Are you guys from Dallas? Yes. Are you born in Dallas? Yes, I am. I was born in Dallas, and I live here. Uh, I was, I'm, I'm from Wisconsin originally, but I have lived in Dallas for most of my life. So. Okay. And what does it mean to you guys to be actually showcased in a Dallas International Film Festival? I think it's cool. This is my second film festival to go to, and both the first one was South by Southwest with um, this film, which was really cool. But I love the fact that it's where I'm from. And it sounds so cool because it's international. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like the airport, but it's not. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's great. You know, being at Dallas every year, there's so much to do. You know, Dallas is the kind of festival where you come to and you know you get to do lots of press, lots of interviews. They take care of you really well. There's great hospitality, um, and. It's an event, you know, it's not just a bunch of films playing, which a lot of film festivals can be. There's a huge event that happens around it, and it's all about the films, um, and the people, and the actors, and the, and the writers and directors. Did you have a favorite moment on set while in production? Okay. Um, my favorite moment on set, there was a scene where we shot in a baseball field, and so we, um, they rented out like the entire baseball field so we got to go like in the dugouts and behind the scenes kind of a thing and that was a lot of fun for me to watch them play baseball while they were filming and to see David out there having so much fun. Um, I think that was a lot of fun because all of the extras that were there were all from Louisville and so it was fun to meet locals and it was fun to see everybody so involved and everybody so happy to be there so that was one of my favorite moments. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead that was like the me. second day of shooting too. Was, oh yeah? Yeah, I was like, we're off to a good start. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. What were, you know, your own individual favorite moments on set? Because I know it's a lot of bad ones. I want to know about the good ones. What were your favorite moments? Um, well, shooting the film or in the film? Yeah, well, like in production. Okay, well my favorite part was definitely spending time with the characters. Um, Travis and Teddy. <laughs> I had to think, two T's. Um, um, they were really cool people, and it was really fun to hang out with them and build a relationship with them in the film and outside of the film. And I think that definitely made the film what it is because having that relationship with the other actors really does matter. That was neat because in the film, you know, the characters, you know, Jeffrey, the character you play, has to meet um, Teddy kind of for the first time really and so that's kind of like halfway through the film there's like these introductions <laughs> and you guys become you guys you can see that there's a connection there while you're watching the footage and that was really cool behind the scenes of the film you know getting all the footage about how long did that take and how many people do you say that you reached out to to actually compel this 20 minute film yeah there was there was a lot of footage i mean we uh, had only a certain number of uh, people that were interviewed in the film a certain number of characters but we interviewed probably 50 people all over the country, uh, California, Texas, and Washington, uh, D.C. were the three big areas that we sort of focused our efforts on. Um, and so it's a lot more, in documentaries, even a 20 minute, there's a lot more footage that you do and a lot more back work that you do just to put together a 20 minute. So it's, it's, it was, it's a pretty long process. It took us about a year, and then also we were indie. So we're financing this ourselves. We're doing this, you know, two guys are doing it themselves, so it's an indie film. Um, so you have to wait on funding, you have to wait on, if you have the money to go fly over here to go interview these people. So it's it's a process, it's definitely a process. And, and, and not having that funding, not having the backing, it, it definitely slows you down in the process, but 
you know, we were able to do it. We love what we were doing. We think it's a great topic to cover. We think it's a necessary topic to cover. So we continue on with it. And we hopefully will get enough um, traction and whatnot to continue on and do a full feature. What can a filmmaker gain by having this film showcased at the Dallas International Film Festival? Well, they can get it sold and have it distributed, for one. That's certainly one of the, the greatest and grandest possibility, but we certainly give a, a, a tremendous chance for filmmakers to, uh, to meet with other filmmakers, for one. We have a lot of filmmakers come in and we give them the chance to meet their peers. Uh, they get to exchange ideas, talk about techniques and methods, uh, meet actors, meet directors, meet producers, uh, meet uh, local Dallas citizens that, that might be interested in supporting their product. If you're a filmmaker, it behooves you to bring your film here because we'll pick you up at the airport, put you up in a hotel room, make sure you have a great time while you're here, and just have a lot of fun. And, and at the same time, you're going to learn a lot too, not, not just about filmmaking, but about Dallas and about the great Dallas hospitality. Um. I think just the experience, kind of. I mean, I've I've had one other film at Diff, and it was a couple years ago with Rachel, who's sitting over there. It's called Traveling. So this is my second time back at Diff, and uh, I'm really excited. I'm going to be at every movie I can possibly go see. So I'm just, I mean, I'm just hoping to gain a lot of experience by watching other movies and seeing what else is out there. And I'm excited about this festival. What what type of growth did you go through in the making of this film? That's a good question. Um, I think during this film, I kind of I grew as a person because I, when I read the script, and then as I'm filming, the message just really got to me because I, f I feel like the whole message of produce is to just, well, I mean, kind of the behind the scenes message sort of a thing that you get is to just be accepting of everybody and that everybody is, you know, a human and everyone has their own dreams and their own goals and their own lives and everyone's a person and to not treat others differently just because they have Down syndrome or because they're blind or because they're old, like to just treat everyone like a person. And so I felt like I went through personal growth with that. Um, and I also feel like I was challenged as an actress too because I, I'm used to playing characters that are kind of like me, just like bubbly and nice and whatever. So it was fun to play kind of a brat. I think Katie was a little bit because she has a, a not a very good strong connection with her dad. So she's a little bit distant from him and she's kind of mean to him and so I think it was challenging for me to play a character that grows so much through a film because she goes from, well I don't want to give away the ending, but she starts in a pretty bad place. So I think it was really, really cool for me to just get to grow with Katie and then get to grow with myself too. For, you know, kids growing up who want to be an actor or director, what advice would you give yeah. to them from your experience? Um, my advice for, act for actors is if you love it, do it. If you don't, don't do it because it really is the thing that you have to stick with for your entire life if you're going to be an actor because it is a huge process. It's not just get money and get famous. It's the acting that's the important part, which is what I've learned and that was the reason I wanted to start it because I did like doing it. I love the people. Actors are really awesome people because um, and interesting people because they all do the same thing as you and it's great to have that common ground with people so that's the reason I act because I love it. Um, work hard, have fun, uh, don't give up and don't be cynical and try to love yourself as much as you can because it's really hard when you start making mistakes but just just stick by yourself you know it'll all Things will come together if they're meant to be. And one last question. Sure. Uh, I guess for the director, what is, I guess, your overall message? You know, when people watch this film, what do you want them to actually leave the, the auditorium with when they see it? That, you know, it's, it's okay. You know, it's like there's, the ending, it ends with very beautiful music for a reason. Because, you know, like, most, the best thing about life is that it keeps going. You know, even when it gets you down, it's, you know, it's still going to keep going. Thank you so much, Dallas Entertainment Journal. You guys are the best. Yes, and I agree with that, and also, this is cool. Thank you, Dallas Entertainment Journal, for letting us do this and having us. For this. Thank you for coming to the Dallas International Film Festival. We wouldn't be here, we certainly wouldn't have the audiences we have without um, folks like you, Jackson, who's helping us out in the Dallas Entertainment Journal. 
Uh, you guys are the ones that, that take the good things that go on in the city and make sure everybody knows about it. So thank you for what you do. All right, and thank you as well. Sure. I'm McKaylee Miller, and thank you so much for interviewing me on Dallas Entertainment Journal.